Our, our next panelist is a representative of local governance. Um, apparently, he's being repurposed uh, as we speak. <laughs> as we speak. Um, uh, Kevin Millsup is a, uh, a trustee in the Vancouver School Board. He's a Coalition of Progressive Electric uh, trustee and candidate, I suppose it's fair to say. Uh, we invited the Vancouver School Board to send a representative, and it seems that Kevin got the short straw. Um, I've met Kevin in my capacity as a District Parent Advisory Council rep at uh, Committee 2, which is planning facilities, because one of the things that is a big issue around here, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't resist putting this in, um, and I do want to thank Kevin and the school board on it for a certain, some of the changes and the movement they've made in general, but in particular facing the massive overcrowding we have at our schools and the university endowment lands where the development out here, which so many of you might know, has been going at a breakneck speed. So our schools are really spilling out of the edges. And so there's been some work there. So anyway, uh, that's a very, very local issue. Uh, Kevin has done an awful lot of work with uh, youth projects and democracy is issues and has, I think, had a, a very strong impa impact in the new direction the school board has been taking over these last three years. Uh, Kevin, thank you. Uh, Vancouver School Board. We have a little under 57,000 students, K-12 to in Vancouver, which encompasses all the students who uh, attend public schools out at, univers uh, out at UBC. Uh, we have about 8,000 staff members in the Vancouver School Board. We consider ourselves a city within a city in terms of civic governance within, within Vancouver. Our operating budget annually is around 400 million. I have enough zeros there? Yeah, okay, that's about right. 400 million dollars annually. For perspective, in the last 10 years, we have lost or cut 100 million dollars from our budget. And we now serve approximately the same number of students now as we did about a decade ago and our budget theoretically should be 20% larger than it is today. We do more today in public schools in Vancouver than we did 10 years ago in terms of the array of needs that we need to serve in public education. <coughs> Part of the significance, I think, of what happened for, in Van for Vancouver schools, a lot of it has been very eloquently laid out by the speakers before me. I want to talk to a couple of points. I guess one of the challenges from our perspective was that we felt like something stuck in the middle of a sandwich because bargaining happens provincially. At one point it did happen locally and I wasn't around at that point in terms of I was in the system but I wasn't the system, I guess, <laughs> as I sometimes refer to myself now as being. Um, but, and I understand there were problems with local bargaining uh, as well, but as an employer, a local employer, we had no say in terms of what the province was doing uh, in terms of negotiations with the teachers or not negotiating with the teachers. When the government imposed Bill 12, the Vancouver School Board took a position that we felt that the imposition of that bill would do nothing to improve relations in public schools, even if teachers had returned to school the very next day or a few days later under that imposition, based on the results and the, some of the, the poor feeling still lasting in the system from the previous job action, we knew that, sure, teachers might go back to work, but there would be a feeling of with amongst our, st our staff would feel disrespected, which they were disrespected by the provincial government. And so we told the provincial government we thought Bill 12 was a bad idea. We asked them to return to the table to come up with a negotiated settlement. We didn't take a stance on what that settlement to be. We didn't feel that that was our position to do so, um, partly because we don't have a role in, in, in negotiations. You mentioned the Terminator a few moments ago. I thought that that, and I think that's a, that analogy is interesting because 
I think an element of significance from this recent experience is that the strike was, and I'm using strike as a shorthand, I believe a local manifestation of a larger ideological battle which is playing itself out in many facets of our society, and not just here, but one that is localized to public education at this moment, in this, in this example. And for a long time, I think many people have felt that there's a bit of a steamroller happening in terms of an imposition of a mentality, a mentality of approaching every element, most elements of our society as an exercise in accounting and completely removing the component that we are actually vital, vibrant, creative human beings that interact with each other at a human level and that cannot be distilled to a line item in a budget. Regardless of how hard one presses, people just sort of squeeze out the side of the press. And I believe that the provincial government underestimated or overestimated uh, a public, a potential public backlash to teachers being on strike, because that has happened in the past. Public sector workers will go on strike, and public support tends to not last that long. This was an anomaly. What happened in, th in this juncture? And I find that very interesting. Coming back to your comment about the Terminator, the ideology seems, I think, has seemed for some time, rather immovable and rather unstoppable. And one element for me that is interesting about the results of this strike is the result of, in essence, what is a collective communal resistance to an attempted imposition of an ideological viewpoint around public education, which, in essence, is saying to the provincial government, not so crazy about what's going on here. And the folks in California, thankfully, have done that recently with Arnie. Um, you talked about the significance of taking the, the dialogue and the discussion of the challenges of the classroom into the public sphere. That is crucial. One of the important elements, I believe, of this moment that we're in is that because the issues are now in the public sphere, the minister and the premier have both said, yes, class composition and class size are issues. This is undeniable. We know these are issues and we must deal with them. That hasn't happened before. So now there is a window of opportunity, I believe, for some collective focus, very targeted, very direct, very thoughtful, in terms of getting those issues addressed through additional resources. And I know it probably sounds like a similar harping all the time. There's not enough money in public education. There's not enough money in public education. Well, there is not enough money in public education. <laughs> And that is why professionals in the system keep harping upon this point. Because more efficiencies, there's been a lot of efficiencies at the Vancouver School Board over a decade of underfunding, trust me. Yeah, is there still some waste? Of course. Any bureaucracy has waste. Most corporations have waste. Um, Conrad Black's a recent example. <laughs> yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord Cross-dressing of Black Harbor. Um, So in terms of significance, I think this is a fascinating moment in terms, of the, uh, in terms of what happens now. In the Vancouver School Board, we've had a large focus the last three years of actually vocalizing what's going on in the public education system. And from what I understand, from those who pay attention in Vancouver, that is a new manifestation in terms of Vancouver School Board governance. We've been unabashed and unapologetic about standing up and fighting for kids. I see nothing wrong with that. In fact, I think it's a moral responsibility. Something's not working in our system, especially in terms of children. Especially in terms of children. We cannot make this point enough. Every dollar invested now in a child's life, in a child's well-being, in a child's education is money that we will not be spending in the future. If we take care of a child well in terms of educational supports, pre-K, we need to go pre-K, and we need to go past 12, grade 12. We need to be prenatal, actually, in some of this stuff, as they do in the Netherlands. And they have some fascinating public health outcomes there, but I won't bore you with it. Um, then we're making an investment in society that will reap all kinds of rewards, far beyond 
the monetary, which unfortunately is a sad, uh, is a sad sort of sali uh, salient focus that we have. In terms of standardized testing, and I, and I guess I'll, I'll finish here in terms of uh, a larger framework, I feel that the moment we're in is a bit of a cusp between two contrasting visions of public education. One vision says rather simply, and this is a dead simplification, and I'm not doing justice to some of the thoughtful argument from this perspective, which is schools need to be run like a business. Children, in essence, are a product to be regulated and standardized. And all that happens within the walls of a public school is, in essence, a line item in a budget. That vision of public education will not make itself uncomfortable by advocating for public education. It will acquiesce with very little hesitation. And there's another vision of public education, which I won't articulate it as well as it could be articulated. That a public school, an entity, can be a center of vibrant creative possibility. And that a kid is a vessel of genius. Starts out that way, I believe. And I hear that from my friends who are early childhood educators. They tell me that we educate the genius out of children as they go through the system. And I actually believe that uh, over time. I think we're getting better at not doing that, but I believe there's a, there's a grain of truth there. And that done well and supported well, child viewing themselves as a citizen and a learner and a critical thinker will come out of the system participating as a citizen as opposed to a consumer. And those are two dichotomous self-perceptions. I believe that the first vision that I talked about would prefer us to produce people that view themselves primarily as consumers in a competitive construct. What that means in terms of the repurposing that Charles was talking about, the government's now talking about what I believe is an attempt to regionalize school boards and do away with locally elected boards under the rubric of efficiency. Like we've done in public health care to what I, what I would say is not terribly good results. I believe that in the next, in, in this mandate, that, that the Premier will push very strongly for a more decentralized, a more competitive public education system, focusing, demanding that schools look at themselves as businesses to attract students as opposed to centers of creative possibility, to compete with one another for product, product being the income that will come in terms of the number of students that enter the door. And so that is why standardized testing is so important. That is why the Fraser Institute is so important in this ideological discussion that we're talking about, because they are, I guess, the, intellectu the intellectual ammunition, if you will, in terms of this, this particular moment. Yeah, very, use very loosely. Um, but anyways, they're, they're a bit of a grounding. Um, and that is why I think this also, it also makes this a rather, a particularly interesting time for those interested in public education and concerned about the outcome, because I think there's an amazing moment of possibility here. And the question for me is, uh, and Catherine alluded to this, um, we certainly have the ability to take advantage of this moment, and at the VSB, and I'm going to make a partisan plug, we've tried to do this in many, in many facets, not always successfully, but I do believe we have been probably the most vocal and progressive board in the province in the last three years, perhaps the nation. Um, I'll, I'll wear that, I'll, I'll, yeah, no, no, I, I won't, no, because um, I've been reading what they're doing in Finland and they kick our butts. Um, but uh, anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. <laughs>